Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is how stress influences your personality. What brought me into this topic was that on Thursday last week, I got sick. I got so sick, I had to leave early from work. I've never done that before. I left early from work. Then Friday I called in sick. I said, sorry, I can't make it. I'm dead. Then I slept through 18 hours. Then uh, I basically... Uh, took my time to recover on Saturday and Sunday. Being sick on the weekend sucks because you want to do things. You want to go out. You want to have fun. You want to, yeah, you know, you know, you. It's the only free time you have in a week when you're employed, so it's important. And uh, what this all made me think about was the value of rest. What I feel is that we do not allow ourselves enough time to rest to take it easy, to relax, and to just do nothing at all. You know, throughout this time I was sick, I was not able to make a single video, and it sucks for me because I love to make videos. You know, often the issue is not that we are, that we don't enjoy the things we do, but it's that we have so many things we enjoy to do that we never can take our time to be bored or to just sit down or to just do nothing at all. Because those times are the times where we process our experiences and realize what is meaningful and what matters and when we get higher insight and perspective and distance. The times when we rest are the times where we, you know, synthesize and put together all the pieces of data and information that we've gotten through a day. It's also the time where we reflect on everything we've done and said. It's the times where we gain personal context and a personal sense of self, you know, a state of mind. In a world without relaxation, without rest, people would also become increasingly mindless. People would do without thinking. People would speak without reflecting. People would be productive without thinking about what they are producing or how they are producing it. What you see is, you know, there's a habit in today's society to do things out of force. Force is very tempting. Force is tempting because when you do things with force, you also do things. Things get done. So you look at, you use force and you see things happen and you say, wow, I got things done. With force, we become stressed. With force, we lose gradually energy. We find force to be excessively over time draining on our personality, mood and energy. So what you will see is typically we live in a world where people are increasingly drained and out of energy or where people do things without thinking or without reflecting. You know, people are productive and they look busy. They don't take breaks because that's not socially appreciated. They get positive feedback from their bosses, from working overtime. And the company doesn't realize how the production and the quality of the workplace suffers from it. You can take this on to your personal life. You can realize a person who goes from dating to dating to dating, from relationship to relationship to relationship without reflecting on heartbreaks or failures will not learn. You can take this from the perspective of getting stuck in a rut, you know, constantly doing something over and over and expecting the same result, a different result, is madness. Constantly doing things over and over and expecting a different result is madness, the definition of insanity. That's Albert Einstein's quote, I think, unless that's fake news. So, what we see is we get stuck in a rut. We keep doing the same thing over and over without realizing that this approach is not effective, without realizing that this is, this is a problem, this is a strain on what we do. And I realized this on my own YouTube channel, that I'm constantly producing videos without taking the time to gain perspective on what it is I am doing and why I am doing it. And that's been a constant struggle for me over the years that has uh, gradually diminished the quality of my work. So what I'm realizing is I need time for rest. The problem is when I got a full-time job alongside what I do now, I lost 32 hours every week. Before then I had rest. Now I have work and then I have second work. And of course that 
causes the quality of my work to suffer. Before I could take two hours to think before I made a video. Now I go home after work and then I have to make a video. Immediately. I don't have those two hours anymore. Those hours are disappearing, you know. And uh, it's not just that I can produce less content, but it's also that I have less time to think about the content that I produce and what I made and what I thought about it and what I liked about it and what I disliked about it and what I want to make better and what I want to make differently. So it's a constant struggle for me and I have to find a way out of that. The only way I can grow my quality of my channel and reach higher and of course I want to reach higher is by finding a way to find more rest and more time to produce and more time to my passions. And that's uh, the impossible equation, you know, I get stuck on those quite a lot. You know, an impossible equation is where you say, I want to do everything differently or better without making any compromises on other parts of my life, without taking any risks, without making any changes that will give me the strength to do what it is I need to do. Have you done that before, perhaps? Thought of, you thought to yourself, I want to do something or I need to do something, but I'm not ready to make any concessions or changes in my lifestyle to make it happen. That's a problem, you know, you have to recognize that. Impossible questions, impossible dilemmas, impossible choices. What I'm learning is, and this is something I started phasing out this week, uh, or last week, was when one door is closed, you have to find another door. If you're too tired to produce videos, you need to perhaps do something else. What do if, uh, You're never too tired to do anything at all. Okay, only very rarely is that the case. Sometimes you are too tired to make a video, but you're not too tired to write. Sometimes you're too tired to write, but you're not too tired to read. Sometimes you're too tired to, you know, insert thing you do here. But you are, and you have the energy to do something. Something will give you energy, some things will not. So that's another thing I'm working on, which is just effectively distributing my time and recognizing what I'm putting my time into and what I'm getting my energy from. Recognizing when I lack the energy to do something and stopping myself before I do it. In some ways I do think I'm a hopeless case, you know. I will always have a tendency towards overworking myself, but I'm far away from those times five, six years ago where I drew, drew myself to a burnout. On some time, I believe it will take maybe 10, 20 years before I hit the level where I can feel comfortable, like where I can feel truly relaxed and truly at peace. And what my process is today, just, just gradually becoming better at it, gradually finding a stronger center, finding more balance, finding more peace. So the brilliant thing that happened to me during the time I was sick now this weekend was uh, a total reframe on personality psychology and on subtypes. What I came to was a big realization, a big discovery that I'm going to share with all of you on personality testing, on subtypes, on flow, on energy, on stress, on rest, and on the value of all those matters. A comprehensive personality psychology that can track you in flow as well as in stress, as well as when you have energy, as well as when you lack it. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I want to say to everyone who is a part of my journey, who stays with me, who is loyal, who is a part of my channel and who is eager for more, thank you for being here, thank you for being around and thank you for giving me some of your time and attention. If there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to let me know. That's also something, you know, I don't have necessarily the energy to always create, but I do have the energy to help. I do have a lot more energy to offer to people who look for coaching or help or answers. I always have the time for emails and questions and for anybody who's, who needs help with something. If it's this relationship problems, personality type issues, finding yourself, finding your type, uh, dealing with a personal dilemma, developing a cognitive function, whatever it is you need, let me know and I will do my best to help you out. Anything I can do, just let me know. Thanks for watching my video, thanks for being a fan and I hope to see you guys in the next video.